Good afternoon, everybody. You are riding shotgun with Mountain Man Mike. So we are fixing to go up in the mountains. Wish it was colder, but we're going to have to deal with what we got. Make sure nobody's coming. So when I use my fender mirrors the most right there, you can see like the observable universe in those certain areas. We are going to Utah, but we are in Walsenburg right now. It's all freaking absurd. Temperature of 73 degrees. Might be colder than that because my engine's been sitting here running. Whilst I took the suicidal insects off, there wasn't a whole bunch, but coming from Amarillo to Walsenburg, we picked up a few. A few that couldn't handle it anymore. So we're taking the shortcut. It probably takes longer in time but it's a lot shorter in miles and we are on highway 69 which we will dead end this highway to highway 50 which will go up over Monarch Pass we'll go to Salida and then Monarch Pass um, into Montrose, Colorado, and then off to Grand Junction, where I will be there tonight. And I'll have to do the math. We're about four, we're about five hours from Riverdale, Utah. So. I think we will leave Monday morning from Grand Junction, be able to squeeze out a 34 hour break. I've got plenty of hours, I've got 35 hours left. By the time we get to Grand Junction, I will say we will have 30 hours left. We have five and a half hours, 35 and a half I have left on my 70. By the time we get done, we'd have 30. If I can squeeze a break in, absolutely I'll do that just because I can keep rolling and visit my kids and grandkids and then do break at the same time. It's like perfect. Keep the wheels spinning, keep that money coming in. Yeah, see the temperature has dropped down to 68. Still, it's plenty warm for November. When I guess the rest of the country is busting records, temperature drop. So I didn't film anywhere from Amarillo to Walsenburg because I've done it a few times already. I don't think I've ever done this highway. I would have pointed out that old house right over there from the 1800s, I'm gonna say. Probably late 1800s. I've got to do a half hour break. I've got two and a half hours to do that in. And I 
I think I'm going to fish a bit. Uh, I think it's the Arkansas River that runs through Salida. I'm not 100% sure on that. There's so many rivers in my head. But I've got to do a half hour break. I've got two and a half hours before I'm mandated by the federal government to forcibly take a break. Oh, hit those bumps. Uh, we got here Red Rock Road. Okay, that must be Red Rock there to the left. Somebody's old house right there. I thought it was going to tell me there was a, uh, whatchamacallit, either a pass. I thought it was a pass. Like Red Rock Pass. Elevation 5,800 feet. So, we're going to take this back way. I've been on this highway before, once, maybe twice, not a whole lot. But, we also have a light load, I think 10,000 pounds, um, at home furnishings or whatever it is. If it was nighttime and snowing, we would still be going this way. I know some people are all like, you, it's, it's like they're saying that no load is worth it. And I absolutely 100% agree. No load ever is. to drive, to be forced to drive in the snow. Well, I'm not forced to drive in it. Driving in snow is part of the job. If you shut down, if I shut down because it snowed, I would probably only make 60% of the wage that I'm going to make this year. I do this for the money. I don't do it well that and the enjoyment. I get a kick out of it. They're paying me to see the country, so I've had a bunch of different job titles. I've done all kinds of stuff. My kids have all grown, so it's time to hit the road. I got a divorce. I probably still would have done it if I hadn't got a divorce, but it made it a little bit easier. I was like, you know what? Go to work, come home. Go to work, come home. Why don't I hit the highway? So here we are. But, you know, like I said, a few com people have commented, like, you're crazy to be driving in that stuff, and no load is worth a life, and your company should be ashamed to make force you to drive out in this weather. And I'm like, <laughs> I chose to do it and just because it snows doesn't mean you cannot drive so they have chains so you can drive when it gets really bad you can still drive got to keep America rolling roll in roll in roll in keep them tires rolling roll on So, yeah, nobody forces me to do it. I just do it. Well, living in the mountains, <laughs> that's why you, that's what you do. All winter long, you are on the road. And then, you know, I had the opportunity to go off road and go up into the hills and go up and down these really steep roads that are just like a ski slope. 
And after doing that for 17 years, you do learn a thing or two about snow. And so when it snows, you're like, it's just another day in the hood. What's the big deal here? There's no problems, but it freaks some people out. And, and those people that it freaks out are the, usually the ones who leave the, the nasty comments, you know, and that's okay. I don't really care in their own house. I mean, I've told my kids Jesus Christ would get hate mail if he was on YouTube. You know, so what do you do? Roll on, roll on. But yeah, so even if it was snowing and it was nighttime, we would still be on this highway right now, going west to our destination. Wouldn't be going as fast as I am, which right now is a little bit above the speed limit. Mexican overdrive. I'm not going to use my brakes if I don't need to. I'll let it coast. I mean, look at there's nobody out here. <laughs> I'm not going to hit my brakes to keep it in the speed limit. It goes five over. It goes five over. I don't care. I do plenty of times I go under, so it all comes out in the wash. But I would still be doing a decent clip. Well, it would depend. What's the temperature? Uh, how, you know, how long has the snow been on the highway? I would do test grips, meaning I would get like 30 miles an hour and slam on the brakes and see what the truck does. That that's like it gives you information that's immensely useful. You know, I and I I do it where if you just like you look at these people doing these crash videos, they're coming down a hill and their car is completely sliding out of control. Their foot is on the brake the whole time. They have absolutely no control. And as soon as they let up, they've got control because all wheels are rolling. They can steer a little bit, but they freak out and they hit the brakes and they continually to stay out of control until they even hit somebody. They still will not correct it. And those are the people who watch me drive on the snow, <coughs> excuse me, drive on the snow and say, I'm, I'm a danger, I'm an idiot, I'm a clown, I'm this, I'm that. I don't care. I really don't. I've never gone off in the ditch in those 23 years of driving. I've had issues, don't get me wrong. I've never jackknifed a truck. They've started to jackknife on me, but I pulled them right out. The way you do that is, as soon as you start to jackknife, let off the brake, give it gas. Yep, you're going downhill, it's icy and it's slippery. You're giving it gas, are you kidding me? What do you want to do? Do you want to jackknife? Or do you want to get out of it? Get it straight, then go light pressure on the brakes, bring it down as quick as you can. If you're coming up on a corner and you're going to be sliding anyway, then you were going way too fast. All that information is stuff that I use and have calculated before I start to go down a hill. Like that one video. I'm surprised how many views it's got. It's actually kind of cool. But um, I was going down that hill a good two-thirds of the way. 35 miles an hour using a jake brake with a light load and don't panic too much these are the roads I learned how to drive on um, I did that two-thirds and I had no issues at all and then all of a sudden boom there she goes I corrected it so fast. Had I not said nothing, I doubt anybody would have noticed. My water bottles just fell over and knocked my tripod. Yeah. 
a second. Throw them in the back there a bit. Well, at least you got to see that old house that's collapsing. <laughs> There's a few truckers that do this stuff all the time. Um, there's one up ahead of us. Fuel truck. How do you think mountain towns get their gasoline? Okay, let's go to England and Australia. I'm not going to do that again. It's just sometimes when a road is like that, and there's nobody around I'll probably get a ticket because it's on video <laughs> but I've been known to do stuff like that I can see there's nobody coming I saw long before I did that but anyway um, that's how they get their supplies if you got it a truck brought it oh, Volkswagen buses over here Boy, he's got a few of them. And he's got some trucks, some old cars. That's one thing that's neat about traveling around the U.S. You get to see all the, the stuff people have sometimes. And then the other truck is the reefer trucks in the grocery stores. They're basically just like me they just have a reefer unit on their the nose of their trailer plus even when they're empty they're they're heavier than this trailer that I got right now I'm not sure how much I'll have to look into that see what the, the weight of this trailer is compared to a reefer I'm gonna say it might be 7,000 pounds heavier, two to 3,000 for the nose. But they have to drive in the snow, they have to get to the mountains. And if it's snowing, they still have to go. <laughs> That's why it cracks me up when I have people tell me, there's no way I would, you know, I'll, no load is worth your life or someone else's life. Oh yeah, people die on the highway all the time in dry pavement. If you are afraid and don't know snow, yeah, it will scare you. And you will be a danger to other people on the highway. Usually by Thanksgiving, which is next weekend, is it? Uh, yeah, next weekend. I think Sunday, 24th. Today is Saturday, 16th. So hopefully we get snow by then. So a lot of footballs, it's a lot of skiers use mile high home games at that time of year to see if the mountains are getting snow. Because if it's snowing in Denver, it's snowing in the mountains. Well, that's what they think. That ain't always true. Oh, man, I apologize. I haven't did video in a while, and now I'm just like chattered box Sally. Anyway, I just read some of the comments. I try to get back to all the comments. I'm getting better at it, but there's a lot. Um, so I read them. Not all the time. I don't read them all. I try to, but... When I see some of that stuff, I, I comment to the person individually, but then I'll bring it up in a video like I am now. 
Anyway, I will pause it till we get over to West Cliff. That is a great little town. It's kind of up on a valley. The valley to the left towards the mountains, which is right up there in front of us. Uh, it drops down to the west of us. Like Main Street shoots right towards those mountains and then there's a big valley down there. It's actually a great little town. But I've only been through it maybe once or twice. But it was one of them towns that stuck in my head. So anyway, I'll see you over there. Unless something else pops up. I'll try to uh, keep my camera at the ready. I keep missing good shots because I don't have my camera at the ready. Anyway, see you in a bit. Promontory Divide, 85.79. Elevation. About as high as where I'm from, Mikasa. A little bit higher. Texas. All fine and dandy provided you don't hinder this truck. A truck coming on this highway. think he realized who he was getting in front of. Huh? <laughs> Mountain Man Mike, buddy, you better watch it. This is where I learned how to drive a truck.
Butler Field, the little jet. Big beautiful valley. Eagles on the road. Next five miles. Never seen that sign before. I know you'd see hawks sitting on the fence line or on the telephone poles. I could live here in this valley, that would be all right. Got your own private mountains right there. Well, let's see, by, what I mean by that is you don't have a lot of traffic like coming out of Denver, going up into there and then fanning out. Probably only a few roads to get up there. You know. Used to be well hidden, but now with the internet, find anywhere to go. Music pass, trailhead. Trail That's a pass I'd like to go on. Bring her down, clown. Bring her down. That old boy that passes in that white truck had his two young children with him. One thing about living up in the mountains and living out in the country, like my daughter and her friend, when they'd come home from school, they'd ask if they could drive the car. It was a manual, a Ford Probe I used to have, and I would let them drive up the county road, down to take a left on the next county road, which is a dead end turn around the neighbor's driveway and then come back into our yard. I couldn't really get over second gear. But they learned how to drive a transmission that way just by the, the constant doing it. Until one day I had to put a clutch <laughs> in the transmission. And so I was putting the transmission in and I put it back in and before I buttoned her all down, I did it. I don't know why I did it either. I did a test spin. And I started hearing a clink, clink. What the hell? I shut it off real quick and pulled the tranny back off. And I saw what I did wrong. <laughs> I've, done, I've done a few transmissions. It's not like I'm uh, a rookie at it, but there it was printed right on the flywheel. 
and I'm sure mechanics out there will know before I even say it what that said. <laughs> and for those that don't know, this is what it said. This side flywheel meaning I had it turned around I had to spin it around and face it towards the engine <laughs> so it was off just a bit I spun it back around I'm like well it says right there put it up against the flywheel it was the starter disc or the clutch disc whatever it was and uh <laughs> Once I did that, I purred like a kid. And then I let him continue driving the car and burn the new clutch up. But by then, they actually had it figured out. So, I only did the clutch that one time. We are close to West Cliff. Matter of fact, that might be it right there. We'll just go snap and we'll be there. As we come in for a landing, West Cliff. We actually have a guy that works for quality who's from here. Not sure if he's still here, but I did meet him one time and we get to talk in. That house was built in 1896. 1929, the Custer County Courthouse. We got to talk in. Where are you from? Where, where, like, where do you hail from? Like from Grand Lake. You know where that's at? No. I'm like, it's. You heard of Rocky Mountain National Park? Yep. It's the west entrance. Like, Estes Park is the east entrance. We are the west entrance. It's like, ah, I see said Stevie Wonder. He's like, I'm from West Cliff. And I'm like, really? <laughs> I know where that's at. Because I went through there once or twice. See what I mean? How the road just shoots straight out to that valley? I love this little town. Even though I never spent a minute in it, well, I guess I have spent a minute in it a couple of times. Well, we don't go through it. I'll get a nice view of it because here we go. I think we probably could have gone through town and then the highway I'm sure comes back over here to 69 is divine yeah it looks like it comes out right up here but in the semi you know you can't just drive wherever you want. It's a nice lodge. Called the Lamp Post Lodge. Nice, nice. 
Oh, shoot, 65? I'm only doing 43. Let's kick it into gear. Pedal to the metal, keep it flying. That's what you got to do if you want to make money with the Obama clock. You got to keep your momentum going. It's another thing that I've never stressed. But it does, it, it is how I drive in general. But it is very important to do this in the snow as well. Drive in a rhythm. Going with the flow. You can go too slow and you can go too fast. When you go with this flow, you just like skiing. You ever see a, a skier who's really got the moves down? They're just swish swashing. They're just going through it. it it's the same thing. Well, you don't have as much grip as you do as a skier, but you want to just go with the flow. You can tell if you're going too fast. A, a lot, and the people who don't know how to drive on the snow think you can't go too slow. You could be doing five miles an hour and they would think that you're being safe and you're really, really safe. No, you're a hazard. And then the fact you'll come up onto a hill and because you're going so slow, Somebody messed up right there. You will spin out. I see, I come up on a hill, I'm going as fast as I can, provided it's straight. If it isn't straight, then you're limited to the grip, temperature, and stuff like that on how fast you can go. But if it's straight, I'm gonna pedal to the metal and hammer down and get that truck rolling before I get to that hill and I'm gonna shoot right up it. I know, I do it all the time. But that's what I'm saying. There's so many variables to winter driving. It's not just there's snow on the ground and it's slippery. Like some people think. And it is, you get, the, you get in a storm where it's 30 degrees outside, that's absolutely the worst. You get a storm that's 10 below when you got a snow, drive all day long, no issues. These old farmhouses. In the 1800s. So I got an hour and a half to do my break but before I'm forced by the federal government who knows better than me to do a break or I will be in violation and they will take money from me and it will go against my record and they will look at it and say you son are bad you're a bad driver. This old house over here. Vacant, looks like. It looks like there's a... What's it called here? Beckwith. B-E-C-K-W-I-T-H. Beckwith. I don't know. It must be an old-timer's house or an old family's ranch. Or some team. But yeah, they'll, they'll look at it as a violation. That's why my plate on the caddy says violator. <laughs> I give a few comments. The only one comment I didn't I didn't I got that wasn't really great. That's from my daughter-in-law and she's all Aren't you a little old to be having stuff like that on your caddy? <laughs> I'm like, no, you're never too old. 
A few bullet holes in that adopt a highway sign there. Gotta love America. Gotta love it. Um, so yeah, they. I actually have a very clean driving record for putting 12 to 16,000 miles a month on just in the semi. Well, I guess you could put it in all all my driving because you know if I get lucky and can drive 4,000 miles a week for for a month that's 16,000 right there then you add maybe a hundred or two on the caddy but so yeah for 12 to 4, 12 to 16,000 miles a month more average probably 13 14 I try to get as many as I can some drivers are like, I ain't driving more than 2,500. That's fine. There's drivers who say, I can't sleep unless I got a reefer blaring in my ear. That's fine. <laughs> more power to you. I'm not one of them people. I'm out here making money and seeing the country. So I will run the maximum like if I would have played around messed around too much yesterday and didn't run my hours out then when the opportunity came to get to Grand Junction and I haven't actually done all the math yet I looked at my delivery appointment time it's a window so that's one good thing um, I will I would not be able to do a break in this way here because I I ran my hours out I could have ran my hours like I shut down an hour and a half early yesterday but it doesn't matter because I'm going to make it to Grand Junction period no matter if I drove those hours or not so when I get a situation like that it's like hey you know what it's safe I'm in Amarillo I'm in a truck stop it's safe I'm not parked on the side of the road somewhere we'll just shut her down so you know every driver has their way of doing things I always use the analogy that's why some people drive Fords and some drive Chevys you know so just drive whatever you drive it's fine but I don't criticize somebody who only drives 2,000 or 2,500 miles a week that's their pro that's their issue they don't care for the money that's fine but in return don't criticize me because I run 4,000 <laughs> know. I'll drive until I get tired of driving yeah, I don't know if it'll ever happen because ever since I was a kid I wanted to drive would have loved to gotten into NASCAR but had no money and didn't know how to get into it I'm built for it as far as size and weight I was light until I quit smoking I was 155 pounds five seven and a half so perfect for a race car driver when I was growing up they thought I was going to be a jockey <laughs> like I'm not that small I hope I'm not and then I ended up growing a little bit not a whole lot but oh well I had no choice in the matter I can't control that is that a nice entrance to a yard or a driveway right there look at that entrance to your house that is badass pardon my French
blinded by the light. Now you can see everything on the windshield. Let's clean that water streak. I love Colorado. That's why I'm here. That's why I came here originally. Originally to get out of LA. Get out of California, period. Hillside. to learn how to go with the flow is to drive these mountain roads. Try to keep a steady pace and you'll you'll see what I mean by going with the flow. And like in a semi you have to we're light right now so we're not top heavy. So I don't worry about the corners too much at all actually. Um, but once you get a feel for your weight and stuff like that, then you can know better when to hit your brakes, when to accelerate. Like I'm running the brakes right now, let off right now, throttle a little bit, let off. Jake's holding his back open road, throttle out of it. Now I'm coming up to this one here, I'm just going to let up. The Jake is on third position. Touch the throttle to let it off. Accelerate through the corner. Lightly. Let off a bit. Throttle up. Boom. But everybody else, everybody has their own way of driving. I am quite the mover. I've been behind trucks that are just up, up, up. Slow drivers. It's all fine and dandy until they impede me, and then I just go around them when I can. Sorry about that, the dang camera gets twisted on me. Not always watching it. Well, I think that's it for this video. I'll do some more on another segment. fun. I had fun. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again for riding shotgun. Till the next time. Enjoy. Peace.